الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أيها الحبة في الله اللهم إني أعوذ بك أن أشرك بك وأنا على مستغفرك لما معلم ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسن وفي الآخرة حسن وكينا ذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب أيها الحبة في الله I came across something very beneficial from the kuns or the treasures of the Salaf of this Ummah showing and illustrating for us that a lot of these modern day arguments and bid'ahs and things that we hear that we've never heard of the Salaf were dealing with some of these same shubahat and this is related, this is dedicated to those brothers and sisters who claim that the Mus'haf is not the Qur'an. And this is by Imam Al-Hafidh, Qawam Al-Sunnah, Abi Qasim, Ismail ibn Muhammad ibn Fadl, At-Taymi, Al-Asbahani, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, who died 535 years. Hijri. And in his book, his famous book in Aqida, Al Hujja, Fi Bayan Al Muhajja, Al Muhajja, he had a ch title, uh, a, ch a chapter entitled Fasu Fi Bayan Khata, Men Ankara, and Yukun Fil Mushafi Al Quran. Look at this. How these great Imams of the Salaf, they dealt with these Shubahat that people now. 1,000 years later are coming up with as if it's something new but in fact their bid'ahs and their mistakes may Allah guide us in them are old mistakes or others before them preceded them in this mistake and this is the importance ayyul habbati fillah it illustrates for us the importance of gaining knowledge and before we speak have knowledge and this is why Imam, uh, Imam Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala he entitled the chapter in Sahih Muslim uh, in Sahih Bukhari, uh, entitled "Bab Al Ilm Qabla Al Qawli Wal Amal," he entitled a chapter called "The Chapter of uh, Knowledge Before Speaking and Action." Allahu Akbar. Look how relevant this is. This is the Salaf of this Ummah. This is the Salaf of Salih, and this is why we love the Salaf of Salih, and we try to follow their path. And when we look back. At the creed, we'll find the answers for whatever we need to deal with. Subhanallah. So, Imam Asbahani, rahmatullah he said, for the person who denies, he entitled this chapter, whoever denies that the Mus'haf uh, contains the Quran, or uh, the Mus'haf contains the Quran. He says, then say to him, why have you denied that the Mus'haf is the Qur'an or that it, contain, that it is the Qur'an? He questioned. And then he said, he said that this person will then say, لِأَنَّ الْمُصْحَفْ فِيهِ هِبْرْ وَكَاجِدْ وَالْهِبْرْ وَكَاجِدْ La yukun Qur'anan wa He said that the person who you ask this question to will say that the mushaf that it contains ink and paper. And ink and paper are not the Qur'an. And like this, they'll make arguments like similar to this. SubhanAllah, isn't this what some of the brothers fell into? Because of a lack of knowledge, may Allah guide us in them and forgive us in them. Amin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Then he said, Rahmatullah alayhi, he said, وَكَذَا كِتَابَةُ الْقُرْآنَ عَلَى جِدْرَانَ وَهَوَاشِيَ الْثِيَابِ وَالْبَصَطِ إِنَّمَا هُوَ الطِّينَ وَلَا زَوْرِدْ وَالنَّقْشْ لَيْسَ بِالْقُرْآنَ لِأَنَّ الْقُرْآنَ لَا يُكُنْ طِينَ ولا زورد وهذه لا شام مخلوقة والقرآن ليس بمخلوق. So the person will answer 
the person of shubahat in doubt will say. Likewise, writing the Quran on walls and on the cuffs of your garments and on mats and so forth. Verily, this is upon dirt and zorid. I don't know what zorid means. But this is upon cloth and things like this. And this is not the Quran. Because the Quran is not clay or dirt or zorid. That those things are created. And this is the statement almost identical to what some of these, uh, some of our brothers of today, this error, a great grave error in, in Aqidah that they fell into. Well, Quran laysa bi makhluk. And then saying the Quran is not created. This is true. Quran is not created. Ghayra makhluk. So this is their argument. That it is written upon those things, the cloth, the mats, the ends of garment, walls, and clay and cloth and those materials are not the Qur'an themselves. And likewise, they argue the Mus'haf is not the Qur'an. Imam Asbahani, rahimahullah ta'ala, responded by saying, he said, yuqal, then it is said to him, lahu, inna kullu aqil, aqil, ya'lam anna al-hibr wal kabid لا يكون قرآنا ولكن الحبر الحبر إذا كتب به القرآن فتلك الكتابة كتابة تسمى قرآنا لأن بها يتوصل إلى القراءة إلى القراءة القرآن وإظهاره. This is a powerful argument, and actually uh, he is using a very concise logic. And giving us a very important principle to understand the aqid of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. He said, Say to this person who has these shubahat that every intellect, uh, and every person of intellect knows that ink and paper are not the Quran. You know, they're not read, they're not Quran, and they're not. Uh, the Quran itself, and they're not, uh, they're not Quran in and of themselves. Walakin, however, ink, if it is, uh, if it is written with, if the Quran is written with the ink, then that writing is called Quranin. It is called Quranin. لِأَنَّ بِهَا يَتَّوَسَّلَ إِلَى الْكِرَاءَةِ الْقُرْآنِ وَإِذْهَارُهُ He said, and that is because with that, that is the means that you are able to read the Qur'an and that makes the Qur'an apparent so you can see the Qur'an. Otherwise, أَيُّ لَحَبَّتِكِ اللَّهِ And this is outside of what the Imam said, that, that's what the Imam said, and he got into many complex arguments, pages and pages, and some of it is a little bit beyond us and not uh, necessary, but that was uh, sufficient for us. But one of the other arguments he mentioned was a qaida. Actually, a, he gave a, a, a fifth principle, and he said that that you uh, that the Quran exists by its existence and by the lack of its existence it would not exist so he used uh, some logic which is uh, from usul of fiqh and if you find something by by uh, finding something else and by the lack of that something else you have the lack of that thing then it is that thing itself so for example he was using this argument that by 
when we print the Quran, for example, in the Mus'haf, or, of course, in before the Quran, uh, before the before the printing press, the Quran was would be written by hand and written on various materials from leaves to uh, compiled on mats and on walls, as he said, on cloth uh, and, and so forth. That when it was written on these items, those items became the Quran. They contained the Quran. So therefore, then they had the sanctity of the Quran. That is the Quran, and that's why we don't get into our own intellectual understanding and debate and philosophy and try to undermine the Mus'haf and undermine those things. And that's why you find the Muslims still to today that they preserve the Mus'haf and printing the Quran is very important because although we have many people who have memorized the Quran, but most Muslims rely upon going to the Mus'haf and the Tashkil and the, the, the diacritical marks that are added in order to have the correct pronunciation when reciting the Quran. And most Muslims, if not all Muslims, hold the Quran as sacred, that the Mus'haf is sacred, that you see that they strive not to put it on the floor, not to step over it, to put it in high places, to not do anything to belittle the Mus'haf, because they believe the Mus'haf is the Quran, because the Mus'haf is the Quran. So this is the aqeed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, and this is one of the arguments that Imam Asbahani put forth, and he died one, almost 1,000 years ago. He died 1,000 years ago, meaning this book was written approximately over uh, almost 1,000 years ago, where he was dealing with this argument in the shubah, shubah of people saying that the Mus'haf is not the Qur'an. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself. And the Shaitan was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Nabi and Muhammad.